stupid girl plus vest plus chasing wife plus sweet pet plus male strong female strong plus playing pig and eating tiger, in the eyes of outsiders, the infamous fool Shermuron married the powerful Fong Yichen in the capital, which was both empty and unreal. An accident occurred, she walked the wrong door and recognized the wrong person. The next day, he left a sum of money and ran away. As soon as she returned home, she found out that the other person was actually her husband who had been married for a year. As soon as we meet, we will divorce her. After the divorce, Sher M. O. Ran transformed into a dazzling figure, and the big shots from all walks of life rushed forward to follow suit. As her vests were stripped off one by one, Feng Yi, who had always been aloof and noble, blushed with embarrassment and blocked her in the corner. You have to take responsibility for me. Take responsibility, what responsibility should we take? Sher M. O. Rant's heart was in a panic, did he even know? Seeing the little woman's nervous expression, Feng Yi gave a sinister smile and directly hugged her. Remember, it's important, I'll help you recall it again. Chasing a wife is a fleeting pleasure, but pursuing a wife is always satisfying. From then on, Feng Yi embarked on the path of pursuing his wife without returning. Keywords of the novel After divorce, Feng Yi begs for reconciliation every day, causing him to be extremely entangled with no pop-ups. After divorce, Feng Yi begs for reconciliation every day, causing him to be extremely entangled with no pop-ups. Download the complete text. After divorce, Feng Yi begs for reconciliation every day, causing him to be extremely entangled with no pop-ups. Read the latest chapters. Chapter 1. Entering the Wrong Door and Recognizing the Wrong Person. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1. Entering the Wrong Door and Recognizing the Wrong Person. Hmm. What is it, how hard is it? In the dimly lit room on the sixth floor of the most luxurious nightclub in Beijing, a woman wearing a red suspender dress pressed her face against the man's chest. Raising her hand, she touched the man's shapely abdominal muscles even through a layer of fabric. Man a voice rang out in the chaotic mind, Sister Ran, I have prepared a special surprise gift for you. The next second, Sher Moran's restless little hand was suddenly grabbed by a strong and powerful force, what are you doing? Looking up, she smiled smugly and cunningly at the face that couldn't clearly see the blurred features. Of course, I took advantage of you, she said so the special surprise Shiaro mentioned was him. The man was suddenly taken aback, his pitch black eyes shining with a cold cold light in the darkness. Get off me. The voice was cold and hard, carrying an irresistible command. TSK. With a flick of her lips, Sher M. O. Rant's face turned crimson. Not only did she not roll, but she also clung tightly to the man like a raccoon, twisting her body to approach his face. Playing hard to get with her. Man, you have successfully attracted me. I have to say, the gift Xiaoro prepared for her, she really likes it. She is not interested in ordinary men. The more difficult it is, the more interested she is. The man's thick eyebrows furrowed slightly, and his nose was filled with a strong smell of alcohol. The next second, his whole body shook and his pupils suddenly shrank. Sure M.O. Ran nibbled on the man's lips in a strange way. Hmm, it's really soft, and there's also a hint of sweetness. Hey, answer me honestly, are you a newcomer? As if thinking of something, Sher M.O. Ran immediately lifted her head and held the man's face with one hand, questioning. She doesn't want to pick someone else's up. Are you? The man asked in a hoarse and low voice. The flame within was already raging, but now it is being crazily catalyzed by the immature kiss of a woman, almost burning away his last remaining rationality. Of course I am, young and old are fair. Reaching out, Sher Moran proudly patted the man's face. The man's face instantly turned cold. How dare she hit him? If it weren't for him being trapped, this woman would have died millions of times already. Sher Muran pinched the man's chin, leaned down coquettishly, blew a breath into his ear, and whispered, let's get down to business. 
After a few seconds of silence, the man flipped over. She brought it on herself. Anyway, he also needs someone to detoxify. One night lingering. The gentle breeze of the morning blew in from the window, brushing against the seductive face with tightly closed eyes and skin as if frozen. The long eyelashes fluttered like the wings of a butterfly, slowly opening in the next second, revealing the pupils that resembled the blue sea and sky. Hiss. As soon as she moved her body, Chermoran couldn't help but take a cold breath. It hurts so much. No matter where, it hurts. Supporting her heavy head, she slowly sat up. After pausing for a few seconds, she tilted her head and looked at the man beside her with his back to her. A flawless profile, delicately curved like a crescent moon, with a high nose like a mountain peak, deep eyebrows and eyes, and sharp edges. Xiaoro really has a keen eye, and I don't know where she came from to find such a peerless beauty that is hard to move away from. Reluctantly retracting her gaze, Sher Muran lowered her head to look at the inconspicuous watch on her wrist. It's already seven o'clock. She must go back now. Bending down, she picked up the long skirt on the ground. His face changed instantly, and three black lines appeared on his forehead. Is this a long skirt? Isn't it just a torn piece of cloth? Gone. With her lips pursed, Sher Moran glanced at the black shirt of the man not far away. Forget it, we can only make do with it. She took out her wallet from that piece of rag and walked over to pick up the black shirt. She wore a black shirt like a strapless skirt, and her long sleeves were tied around her waist like sleeves. Her once slender waist now looks like a seductive little fairy. Picking up the silver fox mask on the ground, Sher Moran turned around again to look at the man on the bed. Well, considering he's a newcomer, she might as well give him some rewards. After all, what if she just left like this and hurt his self-esteem? She can't take responsibility. She took out the only ten or so red banknotes from her wallet and placed them on the bedside table. She turned around and walked towards the door. Arriving at the door, she put on the fox mask and turned around to look at the bed. Would it be too few? Thinking about it, she took out another pen from her wallet and went back to the bed to pick up one of the red banknotes, writing on it with a brush. She nodded in satisfaction and glanced at the motionless man on the bed. In this way, no one is at a disadvantage. Be sure to pay attention, Sher Moran opened the door calmly and left without any hesitation. After one hour. The man on the bed slowly opened his piercing black eyes, which were as cold as ice. He stood up and looked towards his side with a scorching cold light. But there was a pause. The side where the drunken woman should have been lying was now empty. Reaching out and feeling that there was no warmth left, the man's face suddenly darkened. Great. That woman actually managed to escape while he was fast asleep. Opening the blanket, the man picked up his phone and said, Prepare my clothes and check who came to my room last night. Hanging up the phone, the man entered the bathroom. I finished washing and came out of the bathroom in no time. Yu Guan casually caught a glimpse of a room card that had fallen to the ground, turned around, and walked over to pick it up. The room card is marked as 06, and the bottom left corner is marked as third floor. So, did that woman enter the wrong room and admit her mistake? Sir, this is the surveillance footage that has been transferred out. The subordinates who were already waiting on the side quickly presented their computers. The man's dark deep eyes stared tightly at the scene. I saw a woman wearing a red camisole dress and a silver fox mask supporting the wall, her slender body swaying and appearing in the picture. She didn't come out of the room until early morning. The long skirt on her body has been replaced by a black short skirt, revealing a sexy and charming right-angled shoulder. The originally slender swan neck is now even more eye-dot-catching. The man's cold gaze swept across the ground, and sure enough, she was wearing his black shirt. End of this chapter Chapter 2 He is similar to that man. You are listening at NovelFull.audio
Chapter 2 He is similar to that man with a cold sneer, the man continued to stare at the screen. From beginning to end, the only constant was that she always wore a silver fox mask on her face. Check. The man's eyes emitted waves of cold light, a bone-chilling chill, and everything around him instantly froze, as if he was in an ice cellar. Entering the wrong room is just an excuse. Who the hell sent her here? Sir, Miss Sue has called. Watching the phone on the side constantly shining on the screen, my subordinate quickly said to the man who was pondering something. Taking the phone from his subordinate's hand, the man walked to the window and pulled open the curtains. Late, what's wrong? A gentle and delicate tone, like the warm sun in winter. What? What's wrong with Wan Wan? The originally relaxed attitude suddenly became cold again, and the tense tone was filled with endless worries. Okay, I'll be right over. The man quickly hung up the phone. The subordinate who was tidying up picked up the banknotes placed on the bedside table. He paused for an instant and said, Sir, this is. What? The man turned around, glanced at him, and then walked towards the door. It seems that it was left by that woman. My subordinate trembled and said. It seems that the woman misunderstood me. Upon hearing this sentence, the man instantly slowed down his pace and finally stopped. What did she leave behind? What is left behind? My subordinate quickly walked over with the money and said, Sir, there is a message on it. Taking it from his subordinate's hand, the man's face instantly froze. On the red banknote, it was written with a dazzling expression, It's okay, isn't it? So, that woman, surprisingly, treated him like. Thinking of what the woman said last night, it seems that everything is reasonable. Sir, are you okay? Watching the man with a sudden change in expression, my subordinate trembled with fear and asked. After all, this kind of statement is more or less an appreciation to others. However, for my own grandfather, it is obvious that it is a severe shame, a great shame. The man stuffed the money directly into his subordinate's arms and gritted his teeth, let me know who booked room 6 on the third floor. Immediately, he strode out of the room with a meteor. He had more important things to do now, and Su Wan Wan's situation was not very good. He had to rush over to accompany her immediately. Coming out of the bar, Sher Muran quickly went to a nearby shopping mall and bought a casual outfit that looked like a good family woman to change into. I went to the makeup shop again and removed the seductive makeup on my face. She took a taxi to the vicinity of the Fong family and ran around for a while until a thin sweat broke out from her full and smooth forehead before finally arriving at the entrance of the Fong family. Madam, why are you so early? The servant who was taking care of the yard saw Sher Muran ringing the doorbell at the door and immediately put down the watering tool in his hand. I watched on TV, and they said that exercising more is good for the body and can also live a long time. Ran Ran wants to live a hundred years, but Ran Ran doesn't want to die. As she spoke, M.O. Ran hunched and panted heavily, looking exhausted. The servant quickly opened the iron door and then reached out to help Sher Muran, Madam, if you want to exercise, you should exercise at home. There may not be any bad people outside. If anything unexpected happens to you, how can we explain it to Feng Yi? No way, Ran Ran hasn't encountered any bad people, he he. Sure M.O. Ran lifted her head and gave a brilliant smile to the servant. Her round big eyes narrowed into a line, shaped like crescents. Coupled with her slightly wrinkled nose, which was too smiling, she was pure and cute. That's good, that's good. The servant's face was filled with smiles. Although the lady is not favored by the master, her childlike nature is very likable. As soon as the two of them entered the room, the butler who had hung up the phone stared solemnly at Shermoran, who was covered in sweat and looked like a pitiful little dog with his head drooping. Take madam to tidy up, Feng Yi, I'm coming back. What? The drooping eyelids and looking listless eyes suddenly became energetic, and Feng Yi Chen wanted to come back. What did he come back for? 
He has never returned since she married into the Fong family at the age of 18. Today, the sun is coming out from the west. Okay, Manager Yen. The servant quickly responded. Then he quickly pulled Sher Moran away. After washing up, Sher Muran was dressed up well by the servant. Under the guidance of the servant, she slowly descended from upstairs. She vaguely heard the man's deep and mellow voice, and couldn't help but stop, with a hint of doubt in her eyes. Is it her illusion? How does she feel like she heard this voice somewhere before? Feng Yi, Madam has arrived. As soon as they arrived at the entrance of the living room, the servant eagerly reminded them. The man sitting on the leather sofa casually looked towards the door. When he saw the face with a romantic smile like cherry blossoms, without any impurities, he couldn't help but pause. This is the cleanest smile he has ever seen. No wonder Grandma likes her so much. Come here. He waved and said to Sher Muran, whose heart was beating faster at the door but still maintaining a silly smile on the surface. Sher Moran dodged behind the servant with a complex mood, and her smile completely disappeared, leaving only cowardice. The man not far away had stunning black hair, slender eyebrows, a high nose, and a pointed chin. However, his eyes, which seemed to freeze at first glance, showed no emotion. Cold and heartless. Damn it! Why does the man in front of her look so similar to the man she sleeps with? Madam, don't be afraid. He is the Pfunya and also your husband. The servant took Sher Muran's hand and gently patted the back of her hand, comforting her softly. Oh, he's Ranran's husband. Sher Mo Ran nodded in confusion, then glanced timidly at Feng Chen, who had already stood up from the sofa and had an impatient expression on his face. He spoke in a cold and commanding tone, saying to her, Come here. Under the hustle and bustle of the servant, Sher Muran lifted her foot and slowly walked towards him. Thinking to herself, the more she looked, the more she felt that the Feng Chen in front of her was more similar to the man this morning. When she came to Feng Chen, Sher Muran stared at the almost identical side face and couldn't help asking, Where were you last night? Everyone present was taken aback. Madam is questioning Feng Yi. What qualifications does she have to talk to Feng Yi like this? Just as Yan Guanjia was about to reprimand, he was interrupted by Feng Yi Chen, why do you ask this? Watching the little woman with her hands hanging on her side, clutching the hem of her skirt and a nervous and uneasy expression, her resolute chin slightly raised and she looked at her with a complex expression. Sher Moran. The youngest daughter of the Sher family. Born to be a fool, he has already hooked up with various men before reaching adulthood. He couldn't figure out why his grandmother would rather let him marry such a woman than let Su Wan Wan, who is millions of times better than her and cannot be compared to her, enter the door. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Ask her to sign a divorce agreement You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 3 Ask her to sign a divorce agreement Yesterday Ranran's birthday, why didn't you come back? Sher Moran blinked her watery eyes and looked at him innocently. It was because of her birthday yesterday and the fact that we didn't have the chance to gather together after completing our previous tasks, that we met at a nightclub yesterday. Then, there was the night of madness from last night. I'm very busy. Feng Yi Chen was taken aback for a moment and casually uttered three words. Without any extra words, he took the document from Jiang Xiaomua's hand and casually asked, Do you know how to write your name? If not, it's okay, you can press the fingerprint. I know, Ran Ran knows how to write her name. Sher Moran nodded, her doubts slowly dispelling. Feng Yi Chen, who is it? A powerful figure in the capital city. Will he become a cowherd? What a joke! Even if the family goes bankrupt, with his figure and appearance, he wouldn't fall into the trap of becoming a cowherd. Then write your name on this. Place the documents on the table in front of him, and Feng Yi Chen sits on the sofa. Feng Yi, what are you doing here? Steward Yen walked over, and when he saw the four big characters on the divorce agreement on the document, 
he clearly had a clear displeasure on his face. Steward Yen, although you are my grandmother's confidant, I still have to report everything I do to you. Feng Chen looked coldly at the steward Yen, his pitch black eyes gleaming with cold light, making people shudder at just one glance. Yen Guanjia's expression changed and he immediately bowed and said, Feng Yi, I didn't mean that. It's just that you want to divorce your wife, and the old lady definitely won't agree. Ha ha. Feng Yi Chen let out a cold sneer and threatened him with the old lady. He came here today determined to divorce Shi Moran. How can he marry his beloved Su Wan Wan if he doesn't divorce Shi Muran? Come here, write down your name. As long as you write down your name, whatever you want, I can satisfy you. Ignoring the nearby steward Yen, Feng Yi Chen took out a silver pen and handed it to Shi Muran. Looking at the pen in Feng Yi Chen's hand, Shi Mo Ran could tell at a glance that it was from the Bailey Jean Emperor series, and each pen was worth several thousand dollars. Feng Ye. Yen Guanjia wanted to stop it, but was stopped by Jiang Xiaomua on the side. Yen Guanjia, who will be the head of the family after being in theft. Even if you don't think for yourself, you still have to think for your descendants. Listening to Jiang Xiaomua's heavily threatening words, Shi Muran spoke up first, as long as I write Ranran's Ran name here, can you give Ranran Ran anything I want? Squatting down, Shi Mo Ran pointed to the place where Feng Yi Chen had just pointed, looking at him with a bewildered expression. Yes, whatever you want, I will satisfy you. Feng Yi Chen responded confidently. Okay. Then Ran Ran wants a home of her own, with a lot of money because money allows her to buy a lot of candies and dolls. This way, Ran Ran will have many friends. Excitedly nodding, Shi Muran signed her name behind Party B without any hesitation. In order to conform to her silly persona and hide her inner desires, she can only find a suitable reason and excuse for her series of actions. Is that enough? After writing her name crookedly, she lifted her head and continued to look at Feng Yi Chen's perfectly beautiful face, unable to help but be fascinated. The facial features are deep and well dot defined, like ancient Greek statues. The skin is very white, but because the skin is white, the handsome facial features look particularly distinct. Especially the lips, almost as rosy as rouge. But although he has a beautiful appearance, he lacks any femininity, making the temperament emanating from him even more complex. It is like a mixture of various qualities, all of which promote nobility and elegance, while also possessing his own coldness, wildness, and allure. Seeing the little woman staring at him with infatuation, Feng Yi Chen didn't feel any disgust at all. He knew from a long time that he had the ability to stand out from the dust in appearance. Hmm. That's it. He responded and put away the divorce agreement. What compensation do you want besides a house and money? What is compensation? Can it be eaten? Shi Muran regained consciousness due to his words, and she lowered her head in a casual manner. She was actually obsessed with a man who had been married for three years and divorced her as soon as we met. Truly, sin, sin. Ha <laughs> ha. Feng Yi Chen was amused by her nonsensical words. This smile startled everyone present. Even the highly experienced steward Yen has never seen Feng Yi Chen smile before. Shi Moran heard the man's soft laughter and looked up puzzled. But when she saw a faint smile on the man's lips, she couldn't help but sink deeply into it. This smile seemed as if everything had faded, except for him, everything was black and white. Probably, banishing immortals is just that. How are you living here? Seeing the little woman being foolish towards him again, her black and white eyes fixed on him as motionless as if they had grown on him. Feng Chan casually raised her legs with interest and asked casually. But Shi Moran didn't react at all. Upon seeing this, the servant quickly approached and reminded her, Madam, Lord Feng asked how you are living here. Oh, oh, that's great. There's a lot of food here, and everyone treats me super well. Shi Muran quickly regained his senses and spoke up to answer. But in my heart, I am condemning. She's really hopeless. 
how can one repeatedly fall for love with a man who has other women in his heart? It's really unforgivable. When did Sher M. O. Rant's composure become so poor? But, however, Fong Chen really looks good. So far, she dares to swear that Fong Chen is truly the most beautiful person she has ever seen, not one of them. Afterwards, you will continue to live here. Fong Chen nodded. Although he and Sher Muran divorced, she could still live here and be the mistress of this house. This can be considered as his compensation to Sher Moran. After all, she is a fool. After divorcing him, she will definitely be bullied, despised, and gossip is more hurtful than a sword. It's good to stay here. Moreover, in this way, waiting for the old lady's anger to dissipate, she won't cause any trouble to Su Wan Wan. Brother Chen, at this moment, a crisp and pleasant sound like a oriole sounded at the door. Everyone looked towards the entrance of the living room in unison, only to see a black long draped over her shoulders, dressed in a white gauze skirt, exuding a simple and elegant temperament like chrysanthemums. A woman with outstanding facial features looked bewildered and anxious, looking forward. Late, why did you come? At the moment when Feng Yichen saw Su Wan Wan, his cold gaze instantly softened and he quickly got up to greet her. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Why meddle in your own business? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Why meddle in your own business A delicate woman like Lin Daiyu nodded slightly, her slender fingers lightly touching her colorless lips, and she coughed warmly. Cough Feng Chen came to her side and said, if you're not staying well in the hospital, what are you doing here? Although it may seem like questioning, there is an indescribable tenderness and concern in the tone. Brother Chen, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of her. Su Wan Wan pursed her thin lips and looked timidly at Shi Muran, who had already picked up a red and large apple from the table and was nibbling on it. She was afraid that this woman would try her best to entangle Feng Yi Chen and refuse to divorce him. Sister, do you want to eat? Seeing Su Wan Wan staring at her, Shi Muran picked up another apple from the fruit platter without hesitation. Looking at the innocent and harmless face of the girl, Su Wan Wan was clearly taken aback, and a hint of astonishment flashed in her eyes. I, I won't eat, she said why is she different from what she thinks. He he, sister, don't be polite to me. This apple is so sweet. Shi Muran stood up and walked directly toward Su Wan Wan, and even more impolitely, he stuffed the apple into Su Wan Wan's hand. Looking at Su Wan Wan's face seemingly unintentionally, with a standard melon seed face, the eyebrows and eyes are light, and although the facial features are agile, the excessive whiteness of the face creates a sense of fragility and also stimulates a desire for protection. Presumably, the reason why Feng Chen is so eager to divorce her is all because of her. Sister, you're so beautiful. Facing Su Wan Wan's puzzled eyes, Shi Moran gave a silly smile and said, It looks even better than my Barbie doll. Su Wan Wan, who was originally suspicious in her heart, was taken aback again. After all, when it comes to being good dot looking, the girl in front of her is even more delicate, with a refined and clean temperament. Being praised by someone more beautiful than herself made Su Wan Wan feel very satisfied. She smiled lightly and said, you're also very beautiful. The tone of speech was slow and slow, and he slowly spoke. He he. After revealing a cute smile, Sher Moran lowered her head and nibbled on the apple in her hand. Turn around and walk towards the dining table. Looking at her back, Su Wan Wan was lost in thought. She always felt something was wrong, completely different from what she had anticipated in the car. Brother Chen, haven't you told her about that yet? Thinking about it, Su Wan Wan lifted her head and looked at Feng Yi Chen beside her. As soon as she met his deep, starry eyes, her heart suddenly moved. From a very early age, she knew that Feng Yi Chen was a man with a peerless appearance. But every time she looks at him, she can't help but feel her heart racing and her little deer bumping around. I said, she has already signed it. Feng Yi Chen seemed to be taking an oath, I promise you, 
I will definitely do it. Sitting cross-legged in front of the sofa, Shermoran listened to the conversation between the two behind her and casually picked up the remote control and turned on the TV. On the huge screen, an animated film immediately appeared, Joyful and Big Big Wolf. Upon hearing the sound coming from the TV, Su Wan Wan turned to Shermuran, who was sitting on the sofa staring at an animated film that even a three-year-old child wouldn't know how to watch. The doubts in my heart are like snowballs rolling, getting bigger and bigger. She is foolish. Her intelligence is the same as that of a child. Feng Yichen saw this and explained. I intended to say directly that Shermuran was a fool, but when the words reached his mouth, he swallowed them down again. Even though she didn't understand anything, he still felt that using such a word was like insulting her. So, is Sher Moran a fool? Is that what it means? Su Wan Wan stared fixedly at Sher Muran not far away, recalling what she had said earlier in her actions, as if Feng Yichen was not deceiving her. In this way, everything can be explained clearly. She also wondered why Shermuran could easily sign the divorce agreement without crying or making a fuss. Brother Chen, will this be our home from now on? Full of joy, Su Wan Wan wanted to lean against Feng Yi Chen's embrace, but was also concerned about something. I thought the other party would be a strong and energetic opponent, but I never expected to be a big fool. She effortlessly grasped the position of the young lady of the Feng family firmly in her hands. You can live anywhere you want. Feng Yichen looked at Su Wan Wan with doting eyes. Then I want to go upstairs and take a look, is that okay? Su Wan Wan continued. Of course you can. Feng Yichen nodded. Yu Guang caught a glimpse of the two leaving behind, and Shi sure Mo ran accurately through the apple core in his hand into the trash can in front of the TV. Anyway, there's no one else around, what's she afraid of? This place is about to become the home of Feng Yi Chen and this woman named Wan Wan. She doesn't want to eat dog food scattered by others. Anyway, Feng Yi Chen has given her a lot of compensation. Why should she stay here and not leave? Get up, put on those pink furry slippers, and Shi Moran walked towards the door of the living room. Although there's nothing to tidy up, at least you have to pretend. Just as she walked to the bedroom door, she suddenly heard a familiar voice. I saw the woman in the room change her previous softness, her voice is not as soft and weak as before, and her tone is not dragging. I've already said that if I don't contact you, don't proactively contact me. If Feng Chen finds out that I'm pretending to be sick, neither of us can escape. At the door, Shi Moran paused, so her delicate and helpless appearance was actually put on. Why? To arouse Feng Chen's desire for protection. But what does this have to do with her? She and Feng Chen were originally an empty and unreal couple, but now they have divorced and have no relationship at all. Why does she meddle in her own affairs? Don't worry, I have secured the position of the young lady of the Feng family. You will definitely benefit me when the time comes. All right, don't call me anymore. After speaking, the room fell into silence. Seizing the time, Sher Muran hummed and opened the door, her fair face full of fear. As Su Wan Wan looked over, she stepped back and patted her chest, directly hitting a hard object. Before she could turn around, a deep magnetic voice had already sounded above her head. What's going on? I don't know either. There was a hint of panic in Su Wan Wan's eyes in the room. I don't know if Sher Mo Ran heard her words just now. However, Sher Muran is a fool, and even if she hears it, it doesn't matter. After all, she doesn't understand what that means at all. Innocently shrugged his shoulders, his pale face full of confusion as he looked at Sher Moran, what's wrong with you? Scared, scared the baby to death. I thought there was no one in the room. Sher Moran nervously stuck out his tongue, taking a step forward without revealing any trace, far away from Feng Yi Chen behind. The scent of gardenia emanating from him reminded her of the man from last night. End of this chapter Chapter 5 She is a wolf in sheepskin
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5 She is a wolf in sheepskin, Chin, I think this room is good. I really like the lighting here. Looking at Shi Moran's silly and silly appearance, Su Wan Wan walked over to Feng Chen's side and said coquettishly. Shi Moran said, dot. A house as big as Feng's house has seven or eight rooms, and there are at least three or more better than her room. But Su Wan Wan chose the bedroom where she lived, which clearly shows her eagerness to show her status as the mistress of the Feng family. Feng Chen glanced at Shi Mo Ran's silent expression as he lowered his head, and his brow furrowed slightly. Evening, you can choose any other room besides this one. Although he had no feelings for Shi Muran and they were meeting for the first time, Shi Muran was able to sign the divorce agreement without any conditions, and he was grateful for it before he could. How could he embarrass her? Su Wan Wan was taken aback. It took a long time to realize. This can be considered as the first time she has appeared by Feng Chen's side for so long, and he has refused her request. With her lips pursed, she glared angrily at Shi Muran, who seemed to have no ulterior motives, and her heart was filled with unwillingness. Shi Muran never expected that Feng Chen would not comply with Su Wan Wan. Isn't it rumored that he unconditionally indulged Su Wan Wan? Even willing to go against the Feng family for her sake. How do you feel? It seems that there is still a slight difference between the rumored love brain and it. Su Wan Wan lowered her head first and said, Okay, okay, I don't want this room anymore. Brother Chen, I'm a bit thirsty. She is too familiar with Feng Yi Chen's personality, eating soft instead of hard. Besides, she was already a gentle person like a cat in his heart, how could she have any conflicts with Feng Yi Chen due to the relationship between a room? Feng Yi Chen said, Okay, wait for me here. I'll go get you a glass of water. Okay, Brother Chen. Su Wan Wan obediently stood aside and nodded. After Feng Yi Chen turned around and disappeared from sight, Su Wan Wan reached out and wrapped her arms around her chest staring coldly at Shi Muran in front of her. Do you know who I am? Shi Moran shook her head in confusion and said, I don't know, pretty sister. I don't know. You'll know later. A mountain can't accommodate two female tigers. With a cold sneer, Su Wan Wan walked to the bedside table with her back to Shi Muran. Even though Shi Muran is a fool, she absolutely does not allow any extra women to appear under her nose. Especially, just now Feng Yi Chen didn't agree to her because of her. The existence of Shi Mo Ran will only make her feel increasingly i.catching. Shi Moran turned around and leaned against the wall, calmly looking at Su Wan Wan's back. TSK, the speed of this facial transformation is really comparable to hers. With a bang. The photo frame originally placed on the bedside table was smashed hard by Su Wan Wan on the ground. The glass on the photo frame instantly shattered into pieces. The next second, Su Wan Wan threw the teddy bear placed on the bedside again and dragged the pink furry blanket onto the ground. Since she can't live in this room, Mo Ran can't even think of staying at that time. She has some means to drive her out. After finishing all of this, Su Wan Wan lifted her hand and fiercely walked towards her cheek. With a loud snap, her already pale face instantly showed extremely prominent five finger marks. Upon hearing the footsteps coming from afar, two lines of clear tears immediately rolled out of her eyes. Raising her foot, she ran towards the door. Seeing Feng Yi Chen holding a water cup in his hand, Su Wan Wan plunged into his arms. Brother Chen, I don't know what I did wrong either. Shir Muran. Woo woo. Shir Mo Ran, leaning against the wall, lowered her head and played with her nails. Originally, her plan was to leave after receiving compensation from Feng Chen. The two of them do not owe each other. He walked his sunny path, she walked her single wooden bridge. But now, she has changed her mind. She was never someone who liked to meddle, even though she knew that Su Wan Wan was not easy, she never considered getting involved. Since someone is not afraid to provoke her bottom line, 
she can only accompany her to the end. Su Wan Wan is really to blame, just blame her for not wanting to touch her mother's portrait. Beautiful sister, why did you hit yourself? Looking up, the face as big as a palm was full of doubts. A pair of watery big eyes blinked like stars, full of innocence. You, what nonsense are you talking about? It's clearly you. Before Su Wan Wan could finish speaking, she was interrupted by Shir Muran, Ran Ran didn't say anything nonsense. Sister clearly hit her like this just now. As she spoke, she imitated Su Wan Wan's movements and hit her face. Under Feng Yichen's slightly shocked gaze, Shir Muran walked towards the bed and copied everything Su Wan Wan had done just now. After finishing, she ignored Su Wan Wan's pale face and walked up to Feng Yichen. Dying and dying, you're doing well, right? Putting down her hand, her pretty face was filled with anticipation for praise. Feng Yichen looked at Shir Mo Ran's innocent expression, and all the words of criticism were instantly stuck in his throat. For a moment, he didn't know who to believe. You're talking nonsense. Su Wan Wan couldn't hold her pride for an instant. Ran Ran doesn't talk nonsense, Ran Ran doesn't lie. Lying people are not good or good children. Upon hearing this, Shir Muran quickly shook her head and waved her hands, pouting her small mouth with a resolute expression on her face. Just a hint of calculation flashed under those clear eyes. If you want to compete with her in acting, Su Wan Wan will definitely lose. After all, she has been a wolf in sheep's clothing from childhood to adulthood. You. Su Wan Wan bit her lip. She had intended to slander Shir Muran in front of Feng Yichen, so that Feng Yichen disliked Shir Muran and kicked her out. But now, everything has exceeded her expectations. She never expected that Shir Moran would learn from her. That's enough. Feng Yichen timely interrupted Su Wan Wan's words. He should have believed in Su Wan Wan unconditionally, but when facing Shir Moran's clean, blue sky like eyes with no impurities, his rationality occupied his entire head, and he couldn't tolerate tilting the balance half a minute toward Su Wan Wan. Su Wan Wan never expected that Feng Yichen would interrupt her words. In shock, she seized the opportunity and quickly explained to him, Brother Chen, I didn't do that. Sure Moran was slandering me, and you didn't even know that she said after you left that I wanted to take her room. It's late, it's getting late. I'll take you back first. Once again, Feng Yichen interrupted Su Wan Wan's words. Looking up, Su Wan Wan looked at him incredulously, feeling panicked from the beginning. Brother Chen, don't you believe me? Shir Moran watched as the two slowly crouched down and played with the furry strawberry pattern on their slippers, his eyes filled with disdain and ridicule. Su Wan Wan is so foolish to the extreme. At such a time, even asking such embarrassing and foolish words from head to toe. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 She is not yet her opponent. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 She is not yet her opponent, late at night, you're tired. I'll send someone to take you back to the hospital to rest first. Feng Chen's eyebrows furrowed slightly due to Su Wan Wan's words, and a hint of displeasure quickly flashed through his dark eyes, disappearing in the blink of an eye. Even the tone of speech is more forceful than before, and no one can refuse. Biting lightly on her lower lip, Su Wan Wan looked up with a look of grievance and stared at Feng Chen. Even if anything had happened before, he would not hesitate to stand on her side and believe in her. With a small pout, Shir Muran reached out and grabbed Su Wan Wan's skirt. Wei Chu stared at her helplessly, Ran Ran's mother was broken by her sister, and she hasn't apologized to Ran Ran yet. Compared to grievances. Cut, Su Wan Wan is no match for her at all. Aunt Guan said, if you do something wrong, you have to apologize. Before Su Wan Wan could speak, Shir Muran quickly added another sentence. Clearly, it was you who framed me. Su Wan Wan slapped Shir Muran's hand away and said angrily. 
A calculation flashed through her eyes, and Shermoran fell to the ground with tears in her eyes. She tilted her head back and wiped her eyes with both hands, saying, My butt hurts. Watching Shermuran's shoulders tremble and cry on the ground, Fongi Chen's thick eyebrows twisted into a Sichuan character like a sword. Seeing Fongi Chen's face heavy, Su Wan Wan immediately became nervous and grabbed Fongi Chen's sleeve anxiously, explaining, Brother Chen, I didn't exert any force at all. She was pretending. You go down first. Fong Yi Chen's dark color turned cold. Today's Su Wan Wan is different from before. He can clearly feel it, but still doesn't want to think too much. Just think she's too tired today. With her lips pursed, Su Wan Wan looked angrily at Shi Muran sitting on the ground, crying uncontrollably like a child. Even though she felt reluctant, she still lifted her foot and walked out of the room. Seeing Su Wan Wan's departure through the gaps in her fingers, Shir Mo Ran lowered her head and revealed a hint of mockery, which was the ultimate result of being foolish. If she were Su Wan Wan, she would have already restrained herself when Feng Yi Chen said, enough. Unfortunately, Su Wan Wan is not her. Su Wan Wan not only lacked any restraint, but also intensified and even made progress, repeatedly eroding Feng Yi Chen's patience. Men, no matter how much they love, patience is also limited. Stop howling, get up. Looking at Shi Mo ran on the ground, Feng Yi Chen's face remained cold and composed, and he raised his hand irritably and tugged at his tie. He has no understanding of this so dot called wife at all. After all, he was not the one who picked her up at the door of the Feng family. He had no interest in her at all, to the extent that he only found out today what kind of person she was. Upon hearing the deep yet mellow voice above her head, Shir Mo Ren weakly lifted her head and in the blink of an eye, tears as big as beans rolled down her eyes. Woo woo. She rubbed away the tears from her face with the back of her hand, clumsily crawling up from the ground. Immediately, with his head down, he pulled up his pants like a child who had done something wrong and dared not say a word. Feng Chen looked at Shi Muran standing in such a posture and pressed him step by step, what secret is there between you and the old lady? What kind of magic does she have that makes the old lady feel like she's possessed and insists on taking her to a locked house, even obtaining his marriage certificate without his consent? Even with her head lowered, Shi Muran could still feel the oppressive feeling from Feng Chen, which was so powerful that it was not to be underestimated. As Feng Chen approached, Sher Moran stepped back step by step. In the end, she had no choice but to pout and look at Feng Chen in confusion, what are you talking about? Ran Ran doesn't quite understand. Looking at Sher Moran's innocent and harmless appearance, Feng Chen sneered coldly from a high position, are you really not understanding or are you pretending not to understand? He didn't believe that the old lady's gaze would be so bad that he, as a normal person, would take a fool as his wife. There must be something in this. Ran Ran doesn't understand. Sher Moran shook her head. Watching Sher Mo Ran, who was scared to tears by him, Feng Yi Chen felt even more uninteresting. Perhaps she is really a fool and doesn't know anything. With a cold face, Feng Yi Chen looked at Sher Mo Ran, who was only on his shoulder. Is it really stupid or fake stupid, what does it matter? Anyway, she has already signed the divorce agreement, hasn't she? Feeling Feng Yi Chen's icy gaze, Shi Muran gritted her scalp and said, It's not Ran Ran's fault, why bully Ran Ran? As he spoke, his cherry red and delicious little mouth immediately pressed down, and his already watery eyes were instantly filled with tears. It seems that the next second is about to be taken out of her eyes. Don't cry. Feng Yi Chen leaned on the wall behind Shi Muran with one hand and sternly warned. He hates anyone crying in front of him. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 She was not a good person by nature. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 She was not a good person by nature upon being scolded by him, Shi Mo Ran pursed her lips and stared at him with wide eyes. The bottom of my heart is roast. How cruel. 
quickly tidy up the room. Feng Yi Chen withdrew his gaze and immediately turned his head to look in front of him. This room is neither big nor small compared to other rooms, but the decoration style is completely different from other rooms. Pink walls, white carved ceilings, and various plush toys. This room not only has childlike charm, but also exudes a girlish vibe. He inexplicably felt that it was quite suitable for Shurim Ran. Oh, with a nod, Sher Muran obediently picked up the plush dolls that Su Wan Wan had thrown on the ground before and threw them all onto the bed. Seeing the photo frame on the ground, she carefully picked it up and held it tightly in her arms, bowing her head and saying nothing. Feng Yi Chen frowned and walked over. There was still a small amount of sharp glass left in the photo frame. If she hurt him, how would he explain it to the old lady? Give it to me. Command with a cold and firm tone. No. Sure Moran didn't even glance at him and dodged him sideways. Seeing this scene, Feng Chen's eyebrows twitched slightly. Shouldn't she think he would compete with her? He raised his hand and pinched the high bridge of his nose, saying helplessly, You put it down first. Don't do it. Sher Moran looked down at the black and white photo in the frame. Dare to touch her mother, she will definitely let Su Wan Wan know that anyone can be provoked. Don't come and provoke her. Ha <laughs> ha. Su Wan Wan may not understand the truth. You will be subject to certain restrictions based on the protection you receive. And this will also be Su Wan Wan's punishment. Who made sure Mo ran a person who always grins his teeth and repays him. At the moment she lifted her head, her expression suddenly changed dramatically, and her wrinkled face was filled with sadness and sadness. Woo Woo, the beautiful sister broke it. Mom, Mom will be unhappy. Mom. Feng Chen was taken aback. I never expected that the black and white photo in the frame was actually Sher Muran's mother. However, to his knowledge, Sher Jiqiang and his wife are still alive and have attended public welfare activities together before. It's because Ran Ran is not good, it's because Ran Ran didn't take good care of her mother. Holding the photo frame, Sher Mo Ran muttered to herself, tears falling on the frame with a crisp sound. Watching Sher Mo Ran, whose tears kept falling like broken pearls, feeling so guilty that he couldn't help himself, Feng Yi Chen patiently advised, you put them down first, and I'll have someone replace you with a new one right away. Really? You didn't deceive Ran Ran, did you? Upon hearing Feng Yi Chen's words, Sher Mo Ran immediately lifted his head and looked at him with a dazzling light. It seems that Feng Yi Chen is not as cold and ruthless as others say. Well, in a way, he can be considered saved, saved. Keep your word. Abandoning this sentence, Feng Yi Chen turned around and walked out of the room. Looking at the empty door, Sher Moran slowly lowered her head and looked at the scattered glass fragments on the ground. The reason why Su Wan Wan treated her like this is because she wants to stay by Feng Yi Chen's side. Since she has provoked her, how can she comply with Su Wan Wan's wishes? As soon as the corner of his mouth curled up, a wicked smile immediately appeared on his flawless little face. She is not a good person by nature. Whoever stepped on her bottom line, she's in a hurry with anyone. After a while, Aunt Guan appeared at the door with a new photo frame. Madam, Lord Fong has come for me to help you change the photo frame. Okay, okay. Sher Muran immediately hugged the photo frame and came to Guan Yi's side, handing the broken frame to Guan Yi. Aunt Guan took the photo frame from her hand, took out the photos inside, and then placed them in a new frame. Taking the brand new photo frame from Aunt Guan's hand, Sher Muran picked it up and pressed it against her face. Mom, Mom won't blame Ran Ran anymore. He he, upon seeing this scene, Feng Yi Chen, who had just walked to the door, gradually dispelled his doubts in his heart. Perhaps it was really him who was too suspicious. Feng Ye. Aunt Guan turned around and saw Feng Yi Chen at the door. Well, come out, I have something to ask you. Taking a glance at Shi Muran, who couldn't let go of the photo frame, Feng Yi Chen lifted his foot and walked towards the end of the corridor. 
tell me everything you know about her, word for word. Aunt Guan looked at Feng Yichen straight back in astonishment. A few seconds later, she spoke softly, as far as I know, Madam was not born to the current wife of the family, but to an illegitimate foolish woman who was brought back from the countryside. I heard that she was not born a fool either. It was because at the age of five, her biological mother passed away, and she had a high fever and no one to take care of her that burned her brain. Upon hearing this, Feng Yichen looked at the sky not far away, his pitch black pupils dim and unclear. Is it difficult for the old lady in the Feng family to have any undisclosed secrets, which is why he had to marry Shir Mo Ran, such a fool? What kind of secret would make the old lady have to leave? End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Can't be difficult with two things. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Can't be difficult with two things TSK. The corner of her mouth lifted lightly, and Shermoran sneered lightly. I was actually inquiring about her background. However, the rumors are only rumors, half true and half false. Her mother did indeed commit suicide. But that was also forced. As for why she started pretending to be crazy and foolish since she was five years old, it was all because her mother kept instructing her before drinking glyphosate. Be a fool, otherwise when she returns home, no one can protect her, and those who want to harm her will not give up easily. At that time, although she didn't understand what this sentence meant, as she grew older, she finally understood why her mother's only last wish was to make her a fool. Hungry Ran Ran is so hungry. Upon hearing the footsteps coming from afar, the coldness on Sher M.O. Rant's face immediately disappeared, replaced by a pouted mouth, innocent and pitiful like a newborn dog. Sir, Madam hasn't had breakfast yet. When Aunt Guan arrived at the door and heard Sher Muran's voice, she immediately stopped and turned to respectfully look at Feng Yichen standing at the end of the corridor. Thin lips slightly parted, and there was no change in Feng Yichen's face. Take her down, he said, yes, sir. Aunt Guan responded and then took Sher Muran's hand. Madam, breakfast has already been prepared and we can go eat it now, she said as if thinking of something, Aunt Guan looked at Feng Yichen straight and slender back and said, Feng Yi, do you want to? No need. Before Aunt Guan could finish speaking, she was interrupted by Feng Yichen's voice. Seeing this, Aunt Guan couldn't say anything more and just pulled Sher Muran away. Feng Yi is unpredictable, and his relationship with his wife is not very good. She is afraid that his wife's every move will make him unhappy. As she left, Sher Muran turned her head and glanced at the end of the corridor. The golden sunlight poured down from the window, casting an upper halo on the man's back. The clean and slender figure created an illusion in a daze. With a touch of isolated loneliness, it feels like walking alone for a thousand years in the world. It's unbearable but also afraid to approach. Reluctantly retracting her gaze, Sher Muran was still held by Aunt Guan's hand, silently following behind her with her head lowered, he is really a man who can't help but be tempted at a glance. Unfortunately, my eyes are not working well. There are countless beauties in the world, but he only falls in love with Su Wan Wan's green tea. Until there was no movement behind him, Feng Yichen turned around quietly. Now that he had received the divorce agreement, the next step was to go and have a showdown with the old lady. Sir, it's not good anymore. Just as he was about to lift his foot and leave, the voice of his subordinate, Jiang Xiaomo, came from afar. Speak up. Retracting his feet, Feng Yichen furrowed his brow. What's the point of being so panicked? Old lady, she's here. After taking a breath, Jiang Xiaomo quickly said. What? The furrowed brow unconsciously deepened. What is the old lady doing here? Thinking of the reaction of Steward Yen just now, Feng Yichen's eyes, which were as dark as dusk, flashed with a cold chill. It seems that Steward Yen is really loyal to the old lady. Where did Su Wan Wan arrive? Thinking of Su Wan Wan who had just left, he asked indifferently. I guess it won't collide. It should have left Beiyuan. 
Jiang Xiaomua lowered his head and glanced at the watch on his wrist. Hmm. Still as cold as ever. Lifting his feet, Feng Yichen walked towards the staircase. Since the old lady has already arrived with great enthusiasm, how can he not personally go to greet her at home? Coming down from upstairs, Feng Yichan walked straight towards the restaurant. As soon as I entered the restaurant, I saw Shi Muran, sitting at the table, eating mantu in her hand. Although it was just a noodle dish, in her eyes, it seemed like the most delicious thing in the world, millions of times more delicious than delicacies. After eating a mantu, Shi Muran reached into the basket with deep dot fried dough sticks. She personally believes that in this world, we must never be at odds with two things. One is to eat. The second is money. For her, no matter how much money she earns, it is actually just for the convenience of her going to different places to taste the delicious local cuisine. Madam, please eat slowly and be careful not to choke. Aunt Guan skillfully handed the nearby milk to Sher Moran. Every time the lady starts eating, it's called concentration, as if she hasn't eaten anything in a few days. Although eating is not aesthetically pleasing, it inexplicably generates an appetite. Thank you, Aunt Guan. Hee <laughs> hee. Put deep dot fried dough sticks in his mouth, and when Moran reached out vaguely, he took the milk from Guan Yi's hands with his greasy hands. Then, holding a milk cup in one hand, and taking out the deep dot fried dough sticks in the mouth in the other hand. My gaze casually swept over the slender figure leaning against the door, as if I hadn't seen it. I tilted my head and drank the milk from the cup in one breath. Feng Yi Chen has some doubts about her. It is purely normal. And she won't take it to heart, just like before. For so many years, apart from her self-destruction, no one knew that Shi Moran was actually not a fool. What about Feng Yi Chen's suspicion? After all, she was still conquered by her ceiling level acting skills. End of this chapter. Why haven't you read enough of chapter 9 yet? You are listening at novel full dot audio. Why haven't you read enough of chapter 9 yet, Feng, Feng Yi? Aunt Guan looked up and saw Feng Yi Chen at the door. She was momentarily stunned, not expecting him to appear here. Feng Yi Chen didn't say anything and continued walking inside. Arriving at the dining table, he reached out and pulled the chair open, sitting down next to Shermoran. But it was just a regular breakfast, and seeing her eating so deliciously, he felt the hunger of an empty stomach as he didn't eat much breakfast. Prepare a cup of hot coffee for me. Picking up the wet tissue on the side, Feng Yichan carefully and attentively wiped his hands. Shir Muran glanced at her and was instantly startled. His hands were pure white and flawless, slender and slender, with distinct joints, as if it were a stunning artwork with enchanting magic, even wanting to own it. Cough. Perhaps it was because she was too engrossed in it, and when she realized it, she was choking on the milk in her mouth. Placing the cup on the table, Shiremo ran bent over and coughed violently. It's so uncomfortable. My throat was hot and spicy, as if there was a small flame burning. Madam, are you okay? Listening to the intense cough coming from the restaurant, Aunt Guan quickly put down what she was doing and ran out of the kitchen. It's so uncomfortable, Ran Ran. It's uncomfortable here. With tears in her eyes, Sher Moran straightened up and pointed at her throat, feeling aggrieved. See, I'll make you slow down. You don't believe me, I'm choking on you. Aunt Guan glanced at the almost bottomed milk cup and walked over to M.O. Ran with a helpless expression. She reached out and gently patted her back. Hee <laughs> hee, Ran Ran, remember. Looking up, Sher Moran showed a cute smile towards Aunt Guan. Although marrying into the Fong family was not her intention, in this family, except for her husband who never sees her once a year, no, it's her ex-husband Fong Chen. everyone really treats her as family. I feel a bit reluctant to part with the thought that she will be leaving here in a few days. Especially Aunt Guan, she treats her like her own daughter. Aunt Guan, is my coffee ready? After wiping his hands, Feng Yichen picked up the sandwich from the basket. 
Feng Yi, I'll go right away. Aunt Guan finished speaking and quickly returned to the kitchen. In the vast restaurant, only Shi Moran and Feng Yi Chen remained. Looking up, she cautiously glanced at Feng Yi Chen who was eating a sandwich. Why, haven't you seen enough yet? Just as her gaze touched his slender fingers, a deep voice rang in her ear. Shi Moran paused. Quickly responding, he raised his hand and pointed to Feng Yi Chen's hand, your hand, take a good look. Combined with Feng Yi Chen's words, it is obvious that she had been staring at his hand for a long time and had already been noticed by him. Rather than denying it, it's better to admit it openly without losing face. Anyway, she is a fool with no ulterior motives. Feng Yi Chen was taken aback for a moment, his chewing thin lips stopped, and his deep gaze involuntarily turned to Shi Mo Ran, who was staring at his hand with two pairs of water spirit eyes open. She is really hard to figure out. Does it look good? Retrieving his gaze, his gaze fell on his hand. But just a pair of ordinary hands, as for making her have a heart in her eyes. Mmm. -hmm. It looks good, it's the best I've ever seen. Sure Moran nodded suddenly. She didn't say such things just to please Feng Yi Chen or to overthrow him. She is telling the truth. Whether it was Feng Yi Chen's face or his hands, they were the most extraordinary she had ever seen, and no one could surpass them. She doesn't have many hobbies. I can't help but take a second look at beautiful things. Isn't it uncomfortable anymore? Feng Yi Chen put down the sandwich in his hand. Her naked gaze made those who didn't know think she was staring at the sandwich in his hand. Shi Moran said, hmm. What does it mean? Throat. There was a hint of impatience in Feng Yi Chen's tone. Originally, he was talking about this. Shi Moran suddenly realized. But she is a fool's character. Ah. She opened her mouth slightly and continued to pretend to be silly. Forget it. Feng Yi Chen's patience was completely consumed. With his thin lips pursed, he picked up the sandwich in his hand and chewed it like chewing wax. Cut. Shi Moran rolled a big white eye in her heart. Empty has its own table. No matter how much she signed her name on the divorce agreement, it could be considered a big help to him. Does he treat his great benefactor with such an impatient attitude? If it weren't for his good looks, she wouldn't be willing to talk to him. Reaching out her hand, she picked up the deep dot fried dough sticks, and unscrupulously nibbled it. Yu Guang catches sight of Shi Muran's delicious eating image. Feng Yi Chen frowned slightly. Is deep dot fried dough sticks so delicious? Thinking of this, he could not help putting down his sandwich. Just when he was going to get deep dot fried dough sticks, Guan Yi came out of the kitchen with a cup of hot coffee. Feng Yi, the hot coffee you requested is ready. Hmm. Cough. Feng Yi Chen responded indifferently, picked up a wet tissue, wiped his hands, and calmly picked up hot coffee. He just seemed to be possessed and wanted to try something he never ate before. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 She and she are the family. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 She and She are the Family, The Old Lady is Here. Yen Butler's words caused all three people in the restaurant to pause. Subsequently, Feng Yi Chen calmly lowered his head and took a sip of the hot coffee that had already been delivered to his mouth. The old lady's speed was really not slow. Madam, the old lady is here. Aunt Guan saw that Shi Muran couldn't stop eating, so she had to speak out and remind her. Old lady. Are you talking about grandma? Shi Muran stuffed all the deep dot fried dough sticks in her hands into her mouth. In an instant, that delicate face like a doll suddenly looked like a guinea pig, funny and cute. Yes. Aunt Guan nodded. Accompanied by the piercing sound of the chair rubbing against the floor, Shi Moran happily clapped her hands and stood up. Wow, grandma is here. She hasn't been here for a long time. Without taking a glance at Feng Yi Chen beside her, she bounced out of the restaurant. 
Feng Yi Chen leaned sideways to look at Shi Moran's back, and it was evident that she was very happy. Thinking of what Mo Ran said just now. Does the old lady often come here? Madam, your hands haven't been wiped yet. Aunt Guan thought of something and quickly chased after her. Standing up, Feng Yi Chen slowly stood up from the chair, lowering his head to tidy up his clothes, thinking about how to confess to the old lady that he wanted to marry Su Wan Wan. Grandma, as soon as she walked out of the restaurant, Shi Muran saw a silver-haired woman not far away, wielding an exquisite wooden cane but looking particularly full of energy. She screamed sweetly as she ran lightly towards her elderly home. Oh hey, my sweetheart. Mrs. Fong only looked up when she heard the sound. As soon as she saw Shirimo ran, her stiff face instantly showed a loving smile. Grandma, why are you only coming to see Ran Ran now? Shir Moran pouted, her beautiful features showing some dissatisfaction, but the joy in her eyes couldn't be concealed. Mrs. Fong looked at Shir Muran's pouted little mouth, almost enough to hold a kettle. She reached out and rubbed Shir Muran's head, her eyes full of affection. Ran Ran is angry. Yeah, Ran Ran, angry. Shir Muran nodded heavily and then took a sniff. However, when she saw Grandma, Ran Ran wasn't angry and was still happy, she said, Ran Ran is so well behaved. Listening to Shir Mo Ran's pleasing words, the smile on Mrs. Feng's face grew stronger and even the creases at the corners of her eyes were tinged with gentle ripples. Relying at the entrance of the restaurant, Feng Yi Chen watched the extremely harmonious scene not far away. I feel a bit uncomfortable in my heart. People who don't know still think that Shir Moran and her elderly family are the same. Madam, she just finished breakfast and hasn't wiped her hands yet. Aunt Guan came to the side of the two and wiped Shir Moran's hand with a wet tissue. Have Ran Ran had enough to eat? Madame Fong asked with concern. She knew that Shir Moran's appetite was even better than that of ordinary people, and she didn't know if she had been disturbed by her sudden arrival. Eating to the fullest. Shir Mo Ran took out Aunt Guan's hand and gently patted her round belly, revealing a bright smile like sunshine to Mrs. Fong. That's good, that's good. Mrs. Fong nodded in satisfaction. A casual glance caught Fong Yichen walking towards them, and the smile on his face disappeared, leaving only seriousness. Grandma. Fong Yichen approached old lady Fong and respectfully bent down. The next second, Mrs. Fong raised her hand and twisted his ear, How many times have I told you? I told you to stay away from that woman. Not only did you not listen to me, but now you dare to ask Ran Ran to sign a divorce agreement behind my back. Fong Chen, I see you're getting bolder and don't even consider me, do you? Grandma, you have a misunderstanding about Wan Wan. In fact, as long as you are willing to spend some time getting to know her, you will find that she is not inferior to Shir Mo Ran, and even worse than her. Faced with such a strong old lady Fong, Feng Yi Chen could only cooperate more and bend his body. Seeing this scene, Shir Moran couldn't believe it. After all, Feng Yi Chen's aura is very powerful. Even in the crowd, he is definitely the most prominent and I dot catching one. But now in front of Mrs. Feng, he has no aura at all, even a little bit funny. She's such a jerk. Don't compare her to our family's dying. She doesn't deserve it. Mrs. Fong felt even angrier when she saw Fong Yi Chen defending Su Wan Wan like this. She raised her other hand and patted Fong Yi Chen's back. Sure Moran said, dot. She was startled. To be honest, this is the first time she has seen Mrs. Fong swear in front of her. In her heart, Mrs. Fong is not only kind and charitable, but also a lady from a wealthy family, elegant and generous. Never before has it been like this. Cough, Grandma, there are others around. Feng Yi Chen could only silently endure being grabbed by the old lady's ear and beaten by her. Humph. I'm telling you, if you want to divorce Ran Ran, don't even think about it. After Feng finished speaking, the old lady let go. With her around, she would never let Feng Yi Chen marry Su Wan Wan, that fox spirit, enter the door. 
End of this chapter.